Another class of agents that has recently received significant attention are the mammalian target of rapamycin, otherwise known as the mTOR inhibitors. The agents used in oncology are everolimus and temsorolimus. But it is important to remember that in the transplant, in the transplant realm, other agents have, be, have been used for many years. These include serolimus and tacrolimus. So we have learned a lot of information in terms of the toxicity profile of these other agents that now we can apply to dermatologic toxicities induced by everolimus and temsorolimus. First and foremost, everolimus and temsorolimus result in a rash in about 30% of patients. Although this rash is not as clinically significant from the psychosocial standpoint than the rash to EGFR inhibitors, it is associated with significant pruritus. And patients will require high doses of oral steroids or oral antihistamines in addition to topical corticosteroids in order to mitigate the rash from mTOR inhibitors as the pruritus can be significant. So I recommend in patients that develop a rash that usually has different morphologies with mTOR inhibitors to be treated with high potency topical corticosteroids initially. The rash to mTOR inhibitors can have various presentations. It can be acneiform or it can be maculopapular. Again, going back to the notion that acneiform rashes should be treated with oral antibiotics and topical corticosteroids and maculopapular rashes ideally treated with topical corticosteroids if they are grade 2 or grade 3 in severity with oral corticosteroids and due to the associated incidence of pruritus with the mTOR inhibitor induced rash also oral antihistamines may be a benefit. In addition to the maculopapular or acneiform rash to mTOR inhibitors oral mucositis or stomatitis has become one of the most important toxicities with mTOR inhibitors. Because unlike mucositis to cytotoxic chemotherapy, with mTOR inhibitors, what you find is that in about 40% of patients, they will develop these discrete, well-defined, round, white lesions inside the mouth, especially the tongue, as well as the buccal mucosa. These lesions are very painful, and patients report that they cannot speak or even eat because of the pain associated with these lesions. Many people resort to using magic mouthwash which is available in different formulations across the country and across the world but the one thing we do know is that magic mouthwash does not work and there has been one paper that has been published that has shown that magic mouthwash was not effective in the, in the treatment of mucositis induced by cytotoxic agents. And from my experience, I feel that when patients use magic mouthwash, the only benefit that they report is that their mouth becomes numb for about 30 minutes because of the lidocaine, but then they go back to baseline. And the majority of patients really do not like the, the, the feel or the taste of magic mouthwash or the, and, of course, the lack of benefit that it provides. On the other hand, we do know that from the transplant literature, the use of high-potency topical corticosteroids used inside the mouth. Yes, topical corticosteroids used inside the mouth three times a day are beneficial in reducing or the number of days it takes for these lesions to heal. So what topical corticosteroids of high potency can one use inside the mouth? Clobetasol, 0.05% cream used inside the mouth three times a day when patients develop mucositis to mTOR inhibitors. And this is useful because usually these lesions are very localized, so patients cannot use their finger or a Q-tip to apply the topical corticosteroids inside their mouth. If patients are unable to reach these specific areas of the stomatitis or mucositis to mTOR inhibitors, I recommend to use an oral solution or a mouthwash containing a corticosteroid. Your pharmacist may assist you with this, at our institution, what we use is a dexamethasone mouthwash, and patients will swish and spit for, th for three minutes inside the mouth the oral corticosteroid, and they will avoid 
eating or drinking for 30 minutes after to allow the efficacy of the steroid to take place. There was a recent abstract published on the use of topical corticosteroids for mTOR inhibitor induced mucositis showing the benefit of these topical agents in minimizing mucositis. So if there is one thing that is important to remember from mucositis to mTOR inhibitors is that topical corticosteroids of high potency used inside the mouth usually only need to be used for less than a week. These are to be applied three times a day and patients should avoid eating or drinking for 30 minutes after they apply the topical corticosteroids.